Um, we're in the year 66 BC. We need to understand a bit about the historical context. Um, Rome has been in internal turmoil. And one of the things that's happened over the last 22 years prior to the delivery of this speech is an Eastern king called Mithridates, the king of Pontus, which is in now northern Turkey, has been effectively uh, defying Roman power. Various attempts have been made uh, to put him back in his box by Roman generals, which haven't really been entirely successful. And so he began his uh, attempts to defy Rome with a uh, massacre of thousands of Romans in 88 BC, 66 BC, 22 years on. Excuse me. 22 years on, he's still going. And a general called Lucullus is sent out to deal with him, who manages to push Mithridates back into the Caucasus Mountains, back to Armenia, Azerbaijan, that sort of area. And then all goes wrong because Mithridates manages to slip away, go back into Turkey, and wins a battle against the Roman forces there. So it seems that Lucullus had almost done for him, and then he fails. And so the Romans become uh, disillusioned about Lucullus and they decide we've got to replace him with somebody else. Now, it just so happens that that time, uh, a guy called Pompey the Great, Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus, has been entrusted with a command in the eastern Mediterranean to clear the Sea of Pirates. If you think of the, the Verines text, one of the things that, we, that, that uh, happens there is that some pirates come along and Sink some some um, sink some ships. These these are the same pirates. Piracy was a terrible problem in the Mediterranean in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s. The pirates even sailed into the mouth of the Tiber, burnt a Roman fleet at anchor, took away uh, hostages. So piracy is a terrible problem. In 67 BC, Pompey is appointed to clear out the mess of the pirates, and in just a few months he manages to achieve what, had what the Romans had taken the previous 40 years to try and do, but hadn't actually succeeded in properly doing it. It's an astonishing campaign. And so what we now see in 66 is an attempt by Pompey's supporters to give him the command against Mithridates, this king who refuses to do what the Romans want, who just runs around Turkey taking over Roman provinces, butchering Romans, generally expanding his empire in the way that evil kings do. Um, and because nobody else has been able to deal with him satisfactorily, the Romans have to find the one commander who can do it. And this is a pitch to give Pompey the job. On the back of the astonishing success against the pirates, extraordinary, can you believe it? Um, now to give Pompey this even bigger command. The problem is his enemies don't want this. They think he's far too big for his boots anyway. And they would much rather give it to someone uh, someone else of limited competence than let Pompey actually do the job. The real danger is that Pompey will do it properly, that he'll clean up, and then he'll be so powerful that nobody can actually touch him. So in the, the argument about whether or not Pompey should have the command, this is where the speech that Cicero makes, De Imperio Nae Pompey, fits in. 